Coach, after uh, reviewing the film, how would you kind of assess uh, how Will played, maybe up to your expectations, and what are some things you thought he did well and maybe can improve upon? Uh, I thought it was I thought it was mixed. I thought overall it was pretty good. I thought he improved in the pocket. I thought he improved as far as uh, maintaining energy with the offensive unit. I thought those were good. Um, we did go uh, three and out way too many times, which uh, I thought that was disappointing. Um, but I do uh, – see him and his receivers starting to get tuned in in a way that they haven't been at least since I've been here. And uh, so I thought that was good. I thought he took a step. There's no question about it. I thought he took a step. And, you know, he's still, uh, well, he's still the youngest quarterback I've ever coached other than him last year, you know. Coach, Charles Cross really improved from week one to week two, it seemed like. I don't think he allowed a single pressure in that ball game. Got SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. How did you feel like he progressed from last year or last week to this week? I, I thought he played better. Uh, I thought he played better this week. I, uh, to be honest, uh, last week, uh, um, you know, he played. Uh, I didn't think he had a particularly good game the week before. Uh, you know, because he, he would have some big plays, but then it was kind of the try to do too much stuff, kind of. You know, then all of a sudden there'd be some kind of lapse. I did think he played good this last week. I think I thought uh, he graded out uh, the top of our O line group this week. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Uh, after last Great. Week, <laughs> glad to hear. It. You got some confidence, so you're doing well. There you go. Yeah. Um, after last week, you said that uh, Will needed to get better at decision making when the play breaks down. He was doing a little bit too much. How do you think he kind of did in that capacity this week, and, and how crucial do you think improvement in that area is for someone to have you know, success in your system? Well, I think it's critical. I think he did good every time other than there towards the end uh, uh, <coughs> when we were trying to eat the clock uh, where he threw it out of bounds. You know, he should have he ran up field and, and, you know, not let him hit him, but he should have stayed in bounds rather than toss it away. Uh, you mentioned Will's youth. Uh, Memphis has a freshman starting with Seth Hennigan. What challenges are there for a young quarterback like him, and how, as a defense, can you attack that guy? Well, I, I think that the biggest thing is you're trying to teach a lot in a short period of time. And, uh, and of course, uh, he threw a lot in high school, too. So I think that'll help him. I think that aids him. Uh, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's, uh, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is you – just do what you do and, uh, and you know, hope that uh, he can't uh, keep it all in control at the same time, you know. I mean, uh, but, uh, yeah, you're talking to the wrong guy if you want any sympathy on starting a freshman. So, uh, you know, they can knock themselves out. But he seems to be doing a pretty good job. Two games in a row he's thrown for a lot of yards. Uh, I know we talk a lot about, you know, the offense scheme you bring in, but uh, defensively it seems like for certain stretches uh, your defensive unit has kind of carried you guys through, through some games. I mean, have you had stops before where, where you felt like you had a defensive unit that was kind of helping you while you guys were still trying to establish that offense? Well, I think you always try to do that, you know. I think that uh, – and really I think all three sides of the ball have been uh, – fairly even throughout the first three. I mean, I don't think we win either of the games without uh, any side of the ball. And uh, so, <clears throat> but I think they've done a really good job. I think they've gotten turnovers each game. And then, um, you know, and then the biggest thing that uh, they're fighting, which is kind of similar uh, to us on offense, is that consistency to not give up the big play. And we're searching for that consistency to, you know, to. Uh, be better on third down type of thing. So, <coughs> uh, going back to that fourth and seven call, the decision to go for it last game. What do you tell Will Rogers in that situation? How much do you think just the decision to go for it in that situation is a testament uh, to the philosophy of this offense? Uh, well, the, I don't know. I'm. I mean, that uh, question suggests more credit than me or Will Combine probably deserve. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, so you're in there closer to the goal line. If you punt it and it goes in the end zone, 
Well, you've really gained us uh, 15 yards, and then, uh, or I'm not sure where we were exactly, but I think we were on the the plus 40, and then, or somewhere in there, and then um, the odds of making it. I did think we'd make it, um, uh, and now if. Uh, and you know we'd had those hitches on the outside, but to, to be honest, they weren't as open uh, on that particular play. So he threw it behind Mackay, and Mackay, you know, which we do it every day in practice. But he made a good play on the ball. Um, but uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, if you ask Will, we're going to go for it all the time. So um, uh, you know, I hear him out of the, I, I hear him out of the corner of my ear, so to speak. But. Uh, then evaluate it and kind of do whatever I want. But um, that was the biggest thing, you know, the, the combination of do you think you can get it? Um, <clears throat> the other would be uh, uh, what do you give up if uh, you don't get it? And then uh, and then the other is just my probably personal flaunts along with our teams of uh, um, feeling like a failure if we don't uh, go in and score. So. You know, we wanted another crack at it, really. Coach, you mentioned after the game uh, about <coughs> Dylan and Woody and how they're, you know, both it's tough to kind of decide which one's the best one. They're, they're both obviously pretty productive. Um, just to, in your eyes, how are those two guys different? And then not to give away game plans or anything, but is there a particular situation that you like one guy over the other? Just how do you kind of decide – who does what uh, between those two? <clears throat> well, I think what's really strong about them is they're interchangeable. Um, Dylan's bigger and's got a little more power, but you know, but Willie's got uh, or Woody's got plenty of power as well. Uh, I think uh, Woody's a little smoother catching the ball, but you know, D Dylan just got done catching a ball that he laid out for, um, and then uh, uh, so they're both good out of the backfield, and then they both block well. Um, I guess uh, <clears throat> well, they're both pretty consistent. I'd say consistency, slight edge Woody, but blowing a guy up, slight edge Dylan. But both will both will do that. I mean, Woody's had some devastating hits on people too. Coach, I don't know how far you're along in your film review, but what have you seen from the Memphis defense? And <clears throat> have you had any experiences at the Liberty Bowl before? I broadcast a game one time at the Liberty Bowl. That's as close as I got. Um, <clears throat> Memphis defense, they run around good. They're fast. Um, uh, the biggest thing that jumps off is experience. They've all been there. They're all seniors. Um, uh, you know, they've... Uh, well, they've started more games than uh, uh, than some of those guys have started more games in college than our kids did in high school. So uh, we'll go out there and see how it goes, you know. Coach, uh, Tulu's made a, quite a name for himself in the return game the last, I guess, three games especially. Uh, are you expecting teams to kind of start kicking away from him? Or you think you're going to have to find creative ways to get him the ball in those situations? <coughs> I don't want to use the kickoff return team a whole lot, but in those situations. Um, you know, I I think they already tried to. You know, I mean, I think um, <clears throat> you'd have to ask uh, NC State, but, you know, everybody tries to kick it through the end zone, and I think they were trying to on the first one. And it just came up a little short. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, if they can, I think they're going to try to kick it through the end zone. And, uh, and uh well, then after that, uh, you know, if you can't do that, then get it up really high and try to get everybody underneath it or have some kind of a deal where you, you know, you switch sides that you're kicking to, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, he's got their attention now, I'm sure, you know, so. Mike, what, what does it kind of say about your D-line? You know, losing guys like Marquis and Kobe and – like Errol guys that got so much pressure on the QBs last year, but losing those few guys but still the defensive line being as productive as it has been, how instrumental has that been towards your guys' uh, success this game and how big this season? Well, I think it's huge. I think you have to have uh, your D-line affect uh, the backfield, the quarterback, and the running back. 
Um, I think, you know, that's important. And you're not going to win many games if you don't. I think that, uh, you know, those guys uh, last year were a great example to the guys this year. And I think a lot of it's carried over. And then I think also some of them this year are guys that, um, um, you know, what that we've seen around that, you know, we're doing a lot of good things here to begin with. Uh, you know, just that, uh, yeah, in other words, uh, within our team, we knew that they were going to be good, but uh, they hadn't played a lot yet. And so I guess, um, you know, and this happens every year, I guess on the outside, some people are surprised. It, we're not by several of them, but, you know, we're pleased, but we're not surprised. And a quick follow to that. The LSU game was announced as an 11 a.m. kickoff time. Which you know, one? The LSU game. Yeah. Do you have a uh, preferred kickoff time that you like the best? And I think three. I think three is um, – I think that window somewhere between, uh, you know, uh, two and four is about the best time. Uh, is my favorite time. I'm out, most of them I've had are – you're kind of the 6.30, 7.30 range. So, you know, Chip, Chip Kelly wants the people in Manila to see the game. So I guess uh, I, I, I would like to think that some of my teams are pretty popular over there too. Two-part question here on just playing at Memphis. Um, first of all, just in terms of mental toughness, what kind of next step do you feel your team needs to take uh, playing its first road game? And also, when it comes to recruiting, how important is it, you know, scheduling games like this where you're playing at Memphis to get kind of recruits there to, to notice you guys? Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference because it's pretty close here to Starkville. Um, I think that uh, – but Memphis is definitely, a, you know, a big uh, recruiting – area for us here. I think that, uh, uh, you know, we're excited to go play up there. You know, we've got to, we, you know, we just got to get a week better and play the best we can, you know, and I think that's just focusing on what we do, I think is the biggest thing and having the discipline to do that. The uh, jump pass that NC State tried in the first quarter on Saturday, did you guys see anything like that coming? How did you prepare for it, and how important was stopping them there to winning that game? I don't know if they'd seen anything there before. Uh, the uh, You know, you were kind of on alert with, with the guy when they came out in Wildcat, and then um, <clears throat> so just the fact that it's Wildcat alone means that watch out, there may be a trick behind it. And then, uh, you know, we got our hands up, and he had to take it up higher than he wanted to, and we got the ball. I mean, it was I, – I would say, you know, we we were kind of alert for something, you know, out of the ordinary just because it was um, Wildcat. And then I thought we responded well to it. Then after that, I think it was kind of reaction. Goodman and McCord both uh, had some playing time in the second half and appeared to do a good job. Do you anticipate them having the jobs this weekend, or is that something to be determined in practice? How will you kind of determine the reps? Yeah, I, I don't know on that just yet. I think they're still working on that, so we'll find out. You know, um, I, I wish I could give you a better answer. Uh, don't know. I think that's a work in progress. <coughs> With Malik Heath, you talked a little bit just, you know, the consistency in his technique and stuff they have to show in practice. I mean, have you seen so Who's this? I, I, you're all muffled up there. So, so. Sorry. Uh, with Malik Heath, kind of his uh, consistency and, and technique and stuff, how do you kind of make sure that he continues with that throughout practice with every rep and that maybe he's not taking a rep or two off? I, that's a constant battle, I think. And then I think that also competition, the competition around him, I think, is uh, – probably uh, maybe creating, I hope, creating a higher level of focus with regard to that. And that competition's coming from uh, Ra Ra and Tulu, you know. Offensive line play appeared to improve, had a couple pre-snap penalties in there. As the coach, you know, how do you kind of address those with one particular unit when they're kind of – there's some consistent issues, I guess, with 
you know, pre-snap pre and holding? Yeah, the, yeah the, you know, the holding, you just have to keep your hands inside. And then uh, uh, the pre-snap really was communication. I, we just have to communicate better. You know, I, the one we jumped and, the, you know, everybody moved but the center. You know, we kind of had a deal. It was going to go on, on uh, one or whatever, and he held it. You know, and then, uh, then others. It's just you know the discipline to sit in there. You know, everybody's anxious to get a quick start, and uh, you know, part of it's just experience. You know, we got a pretty young group, and we got to, you know, keep getting better.